Hello and welcome back to Music Theory from the Ground Up with me, Fake Dr. Levin, the fakest doctor, period. Um, I really couldn't make a series about music theory without including some of the most handy seventh chord voicings I've ever learned. And the voicings I'm referring to are called drop twos. And the thing is, I already did a set of lessons on them a few years ago, and since those videos are still good by my current standards, I'm just going to link to those lessons in the description below the video, and in this lesson on chords I'm going to show another type of seventh chord that's definitely essential called the drop three. So these are voicings called drop three chord voicings. They're really handy and they sound great. So the reason they're called drop threes is not very useful information, but it's good to know. Basically, if you take a seventh chord in closed position, which means that all four notes of the chord are within one octave. Um, and you drop the third highest sounding note down an octave, you get a drop three voicing. So for example, um, this voicing of G major seven counts as a closed chord because everything in the chord fits between this G and this G. In other, wo in other words, all the notes in this chord fit within one octave G up to another octave G. And now, if I find the third highest sounding note in this chord, which is the B right here, and I drop that down one octave to here, you end up with this voicing, and that's a drop three. Um, so see, I dropped the third highest note down, and uh, if I reconfigure these notes into an easier fingering, just a way that's more finger friendly. It's the same notes in the same order and everything, but I get this shape. And this shape is one of the one, one of the shapes I'm going to show you today. Um, and so I'm going to show you a whole bunch of really finger friendly, excellent, beautiful chord voicings essentially. So in this video, first I'll demonstrate voicings for major 7, dominant 7, minor 7, and minor 7 flat 5, which are chords that we learned about earlier in this series. And if you don't know what those are, I recommend going back a few lessons to um, the chords lessons for part one of this series and um, I'll play through each of the new voicings that I'm going to show with the notation and tab next to the voicing so you can pause and try the voicing out see how I'm fingering it. Here is F major 7 root position. The root is on the low E string. Here is F major 7, first inversion. The root is on the D string. Here is F major 7, second inversion. The root is on the B string. And here is F major 7, third inversion. The root is on the G string. Here is F minor 7, root position. The root is on the low E string. And that's an odd fingering, but trust me, it's good. Middle finger on the bottom, ring finger barring. F minor 7, first inversion, the root is on the D string. F minor 7, second inversion, the root here is on the B string. Now here's F minor 7, third inversion, the root is on the G string. Here comes F dominant 7, root position. Oops. The root is on the low E string. F dominant 7, first inversion. The root is on the D string. F dominant 7, also known as F7 by the way, second inversion. The root is on the B string. 
And here's F7, third inversion, one of my favorite chords on the guitar. The root is on the G string. That's a nice, nice one to wiggle around. Now, finally, let's do F minor 7 flat 5. We're going to have the open string there, open B string. Now, if you do this shape on any other frets, it'll be index finger down here on the B string playing the flat 5 of the chord, just for your information. But here we are. F minor 7 flat 5. The root is on the low E string. Now, F minor 7 flat 5, first inversion, the root is on the D string. And here comes our friend, F minor 7 flat 5, second inversion, the root is on the B string. And finally, we have a great hero among us, F minor 7 flat 5, third inversion. for the spooky stuff. The root is on the G string. Whenever you learn a chord voicing or shape, it's important to know where the root is in that chord so that you can play that shape as a different chord uh, with a different root. For example, we did our F major 7 right here. Root position. Now I know the root is on the bottom here, on the low E string. So if I wanted to play this chord as G major 7, I just have to put a G on the bottom on the low E string, and the same shape would work as G major 7. And this is true of all the voicings I just showed you, so keep those roots in mind. Don't just learn them all as F chords, but move them all around, and you have so many great voicings to mess with now, it should keep you busy for a while. And I hope that it works its way into your music and that you've got some new inspiring sounds in your future. See you in the future.